30 years ago today, I picked up this press pass at the Kennedy Space Center for Shuttle Mission 51L. I remember being amazed at how cold it was, and it would turn out that America's first in-flight space disaster was triggered by a simple rubber gasket that had frozen overnight. We thought spaceflight was so routine there was even a school teacher aboard Challenger, but in a flash, we were reminded astronauts are heroes for a reason. Manuel Bohorkas looks back. The seven astronauts prepared for liftoff that morning at Cape Canaveral, Florida, in front of a national audience. Mission specialist Ron McNair's wife, Cheryl, was there. There was a lot of excitement and there was camaraderie, you know? Hey, this is the U.S. One and liftoff. It appeared to be a textbook launch, but 73 seconds in, a seal failed on the right rocket booster, causing a catastrophic explosion. Obviously a major malfunction. Confusion on the ground soon gave way to grief. Wondering what happened? What's going on? Ron McNair had flown on the Challenger before. In 1984, he became the second African-American in space, inspiring Americans with his saxophone playing in zero gravity. Two years later, the father of two was gone in a national tragedy. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. Well, what's that like to have the nation mourn with you? That was a beautiful part of coming back from all of this tragedy. McNair honors her husband by encouraging children to study science and technology, the same skills that helped a man from humble beginnings in the segregated South see the earth from above. And he's described it as just so beautiful and with, appearing without divisions or lines peaceful, he said, as he thought the Lord meant for us to live. Here on Earth, in a grove dedicated to America's space pioneers, words worth remembering. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, at the Johnson Space Center in Houston.